Hi guys, it's Michael from FreshBelief.com and today I'm here to do my Amazon Self Publishing 2019 predictions to tell you what I think is going to happen in 2019 and go back to 2018 and see what I predicted right from that year that actually materialized. So as we all know, Amazon's platform is constantly evolving. Uh, it's constantly evolving beast and we need to be adapting with it. Now, a lot of the tactics we were using previously, there are a lot of, like, say, black hat tactics, and those, what we call tactics, are not really viable anymore. They're not working, you know, because Amazon's algorithm is getting smarter and smarter, and we just need to, like, do everything white hat. That's, that's the way it's got to go in 2019, but I'll speak more about that as we go more into this prediction. So, I'm just going to be reading off the blog post. The blog post is going to be linked in the description below, so if you want to read all of that, you can as well. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, just shaved. So yeah, all right. So yeah, like I say, it's uh, it's been like for me, it's been a truly amazing year. Like this, like 2017 was really bad for me. I was not do much well with it, and then in 2018, I really got back into the publishing space, and I really actually had a laser focus in on laser focus on publishing, and that allowed me to progress at a faster rate. So yeah, my predictions are now here are just a few of the unexpected things that came in 2018. Now, as always, new authorities came into the frame. Uh, some old authorities, they gained more power. Um, new types of publishing books uh, came more uh, mainstream. I was talking low content books. They were uh, done before, but like new people came in and said, okay, start doing this one. This is another way they make money. So a lot more stuff came mainstream as well. Um, I actually uh, made quite a bit of money uh, from some low, some low content books over Christmas uh, and I'll show you this uh, later in the post and yeah there was the first $3,000 day within our communities now $2,000 is a regular day for guys like uh, Joseph Alexander who does the guitar books that's, that's like easy for him guys like Mark, Mark Dawson he has like I think he made a million dollars over the last over 2018. So those kind of numbers are nothing to those kind of publishers. But I'm talking about people within our within our little communities. Um, yeah, there was a first three thousand dollar day over Christmas. So that was like really amazing to see. And the other thing that had really risen within at the end of 2018 was Audible. Audible really came to the mainstream because of the Mixon twins. Um, we'll talk about more of that. Um, and some inevitable things such as AMS ads, they, they, they came through and, you know, that, that's just the progression, like we're paying to get to the top of the sale. But we'll talk more about that. And, you know, as always, the higher standard of the book has just been raising and raising and raising. You can't be producing horrible books anymore. And the minimum page length for nonfiction has also risen. Now, for this post, you know, self-publishing is something that is a wide variety of things. There's fiction, there's non-fiction, there are the two sections, and there's low content books. Now, what I'm going to be focusing this post on is the non-fiction, or this, this uh, video is the non-fiction section of this. So we can go dive straight in. Uh, you, you know the people that I have, that, that I, uh, I'm around with, like, like Mecca, uh, Jacob Rothenberg, Oli El Gore, you know, um, Marcus Martino, the Mixon Twins, they're the people that I associate with. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be focusing on those type of people. So yeah, um, so what I got right about 2018. So again, the link is in the description uh, below to see that post. Uh, I did mention review, review swaps are going to get harder and they did considerably get harder for a lot of publishers. What happened was, is Amazon's algorithm got so smart that everyone was posting like 40 reviews, 60 reviews. We're, still, we're talking like 95 to 99% of their reviews just disappeared. So that was like a real big deterrent. And I actually, I gotta say, I really liked the way Amazon took this approach instead of just like, like, how would you say, uh, banning accounts. Um, because by Amazon doing this, it was quite smart. Them. It was a win-win situation because one, they were just like wiping out those reviews and saying, you know what, you spend your money, but you're wasting your money. You're better off using white hat tactics. So I don't know if that was their end intention, but it, it kind of got the message across at the end of the day that this, this review swap swim is no longer working. So I really liked, uh, the, the way this has turned out. Um, and if you do the white hat, you know, I had one, uh, one of my books, I actually got, I think it was 15 reviews for it, uh, by just using methods of, you know, outreach to people and ask them, okay, you know what, I've got a book, and if you like it, you know, can you leave an honest review? It's, 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 uh, 
you just outreach people and it's pretty simple. Um, okay, yeah, again, another thing that I thought that was going to happen is new gurus would rise. Uh, again, it's like when I want to talk about gurus, these are people that have knowledge in their, in their minds that they want to share. Now, some of the ones that stood out to me, um, is you have the Mecha Osai, he has the, he's created a huge community around him of, of other specialists. Uh, we're talking like Oli Al Gore. Oli Oli is someone, uh, who, you know, you go to for the copyright side. You've got the, uh, W. Kin sales, uh, course. Um, you had uh, Marcus Matino, who is an AMS ads expert, and he also has a company, um, uh, the Urban Writers. Um, so there is two people that have cut that have kind of like a tree, and it's come up, they've, they've branched off. And this is this is what I've liked about Mecca's uh, methodology. He's he is sharing uh, his his knowledge, and he's he's saying, you know, push yourself forward. That's what I've liked about his approach this year. Is a lot. A lot has come from him. A lot has branched out. So, like I said, the two guys, Ollie and uh, Marco, those two people have come out and they've produced some of their own courses for that. There's also Jacob. Jacob has been a stallion, a magician. Uh, I'll have a link to uh, uh, that. That's that. You, you'll see the thing, Bob, uh, to the interview I had with him about his uh, course. Uh, he's got two courses, Roviali and uh, what's the other one? Uh, the the keyword mastermind um and those two courses are just focus on keywords because that is where he specializes yeah he's <laughs> some of some of the methods are like whew, crazy but you know fantastic and another person another two people they were kind of already experienced and they didn't really need a mecca for this but they kind of associated and came together it was the mix and twins uh, with their audible side so you know right now in uh publishing we have everything that we need um so there's some notable names within within that uh branch and tree um, a few other names I want to mention is you have uh, Delta Roberts. Um, I'll have a link to his Facebook group below, or you can go to the post. You can get the Facebook group. Uh, he has a free Facebook group, and he he has always been an authority over the last couple of years, and he just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. He is he is someone that you, you want to ask questions about self publishing. Go to the guy. You know he he knows what he's talking about. I'll actually have a link to his channel as well. Fantastic uh, publishing videos, all about self publishing. Great stuff. Uh, we can't <laughs> skip without saying the main man, Dave Chesson, <coughs> Kindlepreneur. You know. Dave's one of those guys that you just like, he has, he's the authority for self-publishing and we go, you go to him, go to his website, Kindlepreneur, just to see uh, what's new and if you can learn anything new. Uh, some of his, a lot of his posts are golden and they age through the time. Um, now I could have mentioned other guys like uh, Steve S.J. Scott, uh, Barry Davenport, uh, uh, or there are uh, people off the, I can't think of any more off the top of my head. Patrick, uh, Patrick King. Um, but those people aren't the teachers that have been teaching on YouTube this year. These are the main people that have been coming through this year. Now, as I said, the book quality and length how has increased. Um, before, we were talking 2013 to 2015, they were producing 5,000 word pamphlets. Then 2016, 17, Lucy Stefani came in and was like, you know what, in 18, 12, 8 to 12,000. Then 2018 came in and the standard came to about 12,000 plus words. And now in 2000, the end of 2018 to 2019, it's gone to 28,000 words. Now, you can still go below the 28,000 if you could, if you're like, let's say you, your, your, like, my main name is going to be Audible Books. And I'm trying to produce a book, uh, let's say on, let's just say marketing or social media. And I've got a book on, let's say, YouTube. I've got a book on uh, social media, Facebook. I've got a book on uh, Instagram. I've got all the social media networks. And I want to do like a five or six in, or seven in one bundle. And I want to make that book, let's say, uh, 50,000 words. So I create each one of 10,000 words. And I actually bun, I actually have them as single books and then I bundle them together and, you know, that becomes a big, uh, bundle pack and somebody will prefer to buy that now that is a scenario where you can use a smaller length um, books when you're trying to give a bigger perceived value because you think about it is someone gonna buy a two-in-one with their credit with their audible credit or they're gonna buy a five-in-one you know think think about what they're gonna buy you know and if they're gonna get the same information you know this is how you can think about it um, so yeah the, like the main focus for a lot of people is they've been taking the the Mickelson twins course uh, I'll have a link below um, the uh, Audible Income Academy and they've just been we basically we just switched and we're just going for those longer books now there are short books that you can do that you can actually have to three uh, to the actual mark that they suggest um, but I'm gonna test them out and see what happens um, don't ask me about it because I'm not saying anything right now okay so yeah another thing that came in another thing that came was the AMS ads 
Now, a lot of people have been adopting the AMS ads and having a lot of success. Now, for me, um, like a lot of my, how you say, I had a fantastic month in December. Um, screenshot, I'll pop up here, have a look. Yeah, at that I made $5,000, the biggest month I've ever had. Yeah, I did spend around $2,000 on ads to actually make that. But the thing is, like, at the end of the day, I prefer to make $2,500 profit, whereas if I hadn't used an ads, I would have made a lot less money during this period of time. Um, so yeah, this, this, this is just the advantage of using AMS ads. Um, you know, marketing again is, it's becoming one of the more mainstream things where people are, before people were thinking, okay, just pump out books, pump out books, and that's working okay. But at the same time, it's, you need a back end, you need an email list to be able to launch your book and, and then it allows you to get the reviews, uh, launch your book and basically allow you to sell consistently. When a new person comes on board, you can actually start to sell them other books through the email sequence. Um, okay. So what did I get wrong about 2018? The big thing was people getting banned. I'm hundred percent sure someone would get banned in 2018 for using a uh, review swaps or uh, miscellaneous uh, methods. Now there were a few people. I think it was, uh, they got their accounts taken on. I think it was the, the twins. They got it because of, um, what is it for us? They're poor quality books. Now, poor quality books is something that Amazon really cares about. They, they expect high quality. And if you've got multiple books that aren't doing that, that okay, that's what happens. Um, you know, I had a few copyright infringements, um, which I actually had took my books down. And basically, as soon as I came on, but I took the books down. Um, one, I didn't actually realize because he actually did the copyright this year. He just did the copyright and said, I've got the copyright to this. And I was like, okay, I've got to take it down. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll link to another video in the description below that you can see I'd, uh, I talk hugely about the copyright problem I had, like, when I was first starting. Yeah, and that book is from that series. Um, so yeah. Okay, so 2019 Amazon predictions. These are what I think is going to happen in 2019. Now, I really think Audible is going to be one of those things that is going to be huge. You know, it's already huge for a lot of people. A lot of people are making money, but it's like, I, I, I call it the wild west of, of, publishing right now where you can start to publish books and you can put books out there and you can really start to make some good money from from this because some of the niches are open right now um a good one that is said is like okay for something like keto meal plan you have 753 results in kindle store in the bookstore where you only have 73 in the audible store and which one's gonna you're gonna be able to make more which one are you more likely to rank for that's what i'm trying to say uh, and that is in the Audible store, as long as you have like a differentiation factor, I'll speak that more down in, in lower down in the post. So yeah, this this is uh, for me. It it's one of the things where you need to get on it. You need to get on this train right now because come 2020 or mid or late 2019, some things are going to change uh, in Audible, and it's going to become a little bit more difficult. Like uh, right, Audible is trying to just a new platform. We're trying to get on board, and now what's happening is it's just it. You want you want to get on now because if you don't, you're gonna say as we say, miss the train of easiness. Okay, so yeah, uh, a course that I recommend again is the Mix and Twins course. It gives you an in-depth guide on how to actually uh, profit from Audible books currently right now. Okay, so next uh, with Audible books rising, our eBooks and paperbacks gonna die no they're here to stay you know there are some niches where you can actually people will prefer to buy the ebooks and audible books over the um over the, uh, sorry ebooks and paperbacks over the audible books like for me if i'm reading a technical subject i want to get really in depth i will actually i've i've really got my uh ebooks on on my phone um because the thing is like i want to be able to go in depth like audible books is so good is is good so only good so far and then you need to be able to dive in like uh dot com secrets um you know that that one isn't on Audible, and I agree that Russell Brunson shouldn't put it shouldn't put it on there because there's so much details in his books that you actually need to read the books. Um, I'll have a link <laughs> again. I'll have a link in the description below. I highly recommend this book, and yeah, it's a free as well. Um, all right, so yeah, and also you need three pillars: all uh, Kindle, Payback, and Audible. You need three pillars. Okay, so again, in 2019, some new self-publishing authorities are going to rise. Now, I really do think they're going to be like two courses minimum that are going to come out like the AZ of Kindle Publishing and the authorities they're going to start to compete now right now my self publishing blueprint is the one that you should go to that is the best course out there currently for your A to Z but I do believe uh, like two more authorities will come out and they'll start to really push this year and there was some in 2018 but they just they just they're like a course was here and people were just like 
They did. They just went there. They didn't have the connections that Mecca had. So yeah, he's currently top at the moment. But we'll see what happens in 2019. It's currently evol evolving beast, so we never know what happens. Now, just like I said with the low content books, we can publish any kind of book now. You know, you've got the information online. There's a uh, guy, Alex Jordan, I'll link to his uh, YouTube series here, where he talks about how to publish low content books. So he, that's another thing, like, there's, he, he made, I think it was in November, he made like $20,000, uh, from a $2,000 ad spend, uh, from his, from his books. And that's the thing is like, it, it, it's, it's really easy if you can do, have the right mindset to actually go in and look and try and find which books, uh, which, which niches have a, uh, what's it? It have an opening where people are looking for this information, but there isn't something that provides it for them. Um, okay. So next one is brand building. Now I said brand building is key, but it's not everything. Now, with that, what I mean by it's not everything is you first, if you're just starting out, it's not everything to actually just go and build a brand. What you want to do is you want to just start out there, publish a few books and get your feet wet. But once you've got more experience, you want to go in there, you want to actually build a brand. And it's not that difficult. All you've got to do is you've got to choose a niche, select the keywords, write the, sorry, I'll slow down. One, choose a keyword. Two, select the keywords for that niche. Write quality books, then publish books on them. Then you can build an audience and then you rinse and repeat. Now, if you really want to build really quickly, you kind of do this in reverse where you select your niche, your keywords, and then you build an audience. And when you launch the book, boom, and then you actually, you can get a lot of sales from the get go, but that is a more risky endeavor. You're better off actually taking the first approach where you build the audience afterwards through your books, through the books first, through, uh, opt it. Okay. So yeah, just like, uh, last year, angle has become what, well, <laughs> like forever. Angle has always been important and it's going to be even more important this year. You can't just pump out another book, The 50th Beginner's Guide, as Ollie says. Um, because what's going to happen is it's just going to get put down in the mound. Like, you could put out a book. Let's say, let's say your competition is like a, 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 a 150 page book. And you put out a book which is 40 pages, but it's specific on a certain subject that people are going after. Now, they can go after this big book and maybe wonder will it be in there, but if that is, that one certain 50 page book is hitting a pain point of those, of that person, they're going to go for that book because it's exactly what they need. And you're going to be able to outcompete that 150 page book with your 50 page book. Now, it would be better to actually go and create another uh, 120, 150 page book on that specific subject. So you go in a lot of detail and then create other books around well, what are the big, the, the mini subjects of that big book. But again, you get my point. If you have this, it's really good. If you have this, you can actually outsell your competition. Now, if you want uh, to go into more detail with this, I highly recommend get double your Kindle sales, which will be a link in the description below. Okay, next, huge book launches. Now, I really do see uh, huge book launches becoming something that uh publishers will start to adopt uh, adapt uh, adopt now it's going to be di more difficult for publishers who haven't got a budget um, because you're going to have to build up a list be uh, beforehand now fiction publishers they do actually use this right now as a method they are basically launching their books um publishers that have a huge email list that use this as well for the non-fiction but what i mean by this is they go from the start and then boom they they launch a book um while at the same time people who already have a list they do that and I, I do believe that there is going to be some like Facebook ad spend uh, people are going to build up huge lists and they're going to put, get reviews from this they're going to get launches they're going to get propelled up to the top and they're going to use uh, uh, companies like BookBub to actually help push up their, their sales as well so I really do see uh, this being as one of the most one important thing that's going to happen it's going to switch uh, the roles into it's going to switch as a thing that bigger publishers use in 2019 okay so again AMS is going to be king just like it happened with FBA AMS the way Amazon is evolving the platform uh, for Kindle and paperbacks uh, AMS is going to play a huge role where you can just stay at the top of the search of the search and you don't really need to rely on keywords as much anymore because you're going to be more relying on your title where before it was more organic search and you had to rely on like having a keyword heavy uh title now you can name your book something what you want and then push at the top now ams i do believe is going to go into audible as well because as always amazon's always trying to make a good amount of money and if they can do that through audible people are going to pay to be at the top of the search to make more sales and i do believe it's going to go clash across all platforms because the thing is if you can spend a thousand dollars and make two thousand dollars would you not do that 
You know, this is how you got to think about it. Uh, you got to pay money to make money? Hell yes, you would, as well as your organic sales. And what's going to happen with that, uh, with the book when it gets sold through uh, AMS, is it's actually going to go up the rankings a little bit, and uh, not as much as organic sales. If someone clicks on it and buys it, it's going to help push it up the rankings as well. Now, I I really do believe this year, uh, self publishing is going to explode just like FBA, drop shipping, eBay selling, Shopify. I really do believe this year it's going to be, it's going to, it's, it's going to become more mainstream because a lot more authorities are coming out now. Uh, and they're talking about self publishing, giving advice just like they were, uh, just like FBA does it. Uh, just like FBA and drop shipping and all these guys are doing it for that. You know, there were a few people talking about it before, but now more and more people are coming out. Uh, somebody that I recommend that's just giving out free advice right now is, uh, Sean Dolwit. Uh, he gives out a huge amount of good advice. So I recommend I'll have a link, uh, I'll link to his channel right here and I'll link in the, uh, his channel in the description below. Um, so yeah, I, I know all the other authorities I'll, I'll, I'll link. Everyone in this post, yeah, I'll link them on the post. So yeah, I do believe it. Um, and things like, you need to, it, this is going to be so good for the publishing community because it's going to create more competition, but at the same time, it's going to push up the level. That's what's good every single year, it pushes up the level. So yeah, this is going to be a good opportunity for anybody that has a course, you know. I got a class too. Um, but yeah, if you, if you, uh, need it, I've got a guide to how to decide what makes the keyword profitable, but not too competitive. So you can grab that in the description below. It's called, uh, the keyword profit checklist. If you want to grab that. Okay. So review swaps will be in its dying stage. And now I believe that review swaps, they're going to die. They're going to be dead. Why? Because, well, it, it, it's, it's really one of the things where, like I say, Amazon is evolving. They want to get rid of review swaps, and they really couldn't do it. Uh, they couldn't really determine what was what was a fake review and what was a real review. You know, they got it to a certain T, but there's going to be four things that are going to happen. Either publishers going to stop re uh, review swaps in favor of bans, because I think maybe one or two Amazon might push them out of bans. Uh, Amazon algorithm uh, will work out the review swap and pattern and restrict accounts. Um, it's already doing that uh, for Audible. Like people are uh, giving codes out. We actually saw this in the room. They gave out a code and then, you know, they actually used it for a different book and they're like, oh no, you, you can't restrict it now. So things something like that's going to happen. Uh, publishers will know how to get organic reviews a lot better, which I really think is going to come mainstream this year. Um, or publishers main focus will be on Audible, which you know what, if you get I'm going to tell you right now, if you can actually go into Audible, you can get pe people through your audio book boom, and you can put them in a list, boom, and then you become your reviewers for all your books. So that's really easy way, and then you ask them to publish uh, some reviews on Amazon, you know, win-win situation. Um, you can even send them your book and say, can you review so, You know, it's, it's, it's easy. So I believe there are going to be some $5,000 days. Like, somebody is going to make $5,000 revenue. I don't know about profits, but revenue is going to happen. I really do believe this year... It's going to happen now. It's going to have the AMS, okay? It's just down to demand, the keyword bid, sales, and the, having a low ACOS. All right, so where to focus your efforts this year? Now, I think it's just two things. Two important things you should be focusing this year is Audible and brand building. Now, if you can do both of them, if you can build a brand and you can have everything focused around Audible, you're going to make a killing this year. There are some niches which are just Audible focused. Um, they're the ones I'm focusing on right now. There's ways to actually see which keywords are profitable or not. Um, I recommend getting the course, the Audible Income Academy, which will show you all of that. Um, and, you know, th those are just the two most important things. You should have been doing that already, uh, building a brand around your book. So then you can actually build an email list off that. You know, you can actually build an email list off Audible. You just have to say in the narration, okay, to, to get your free book, go to da 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 or you can have like a PDF attached to uh, your Audible um, book, which people can download with it. So yeah, it's it's very easy. Um, just, just Google search. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I believe, yeah, building Audible... Audible brand building is going to be huge. Just like you should have been building a brand for your publishing business, Audible brand building is going to be huge. So, <coughs> so I believe starting a publishing business is 10 times easier than it was like two years ago, three years ago, because the amount of free information online and the courses that are available now is like, it, it's mind boggling. You know, you, you just got too much information to go through. So don't overwhelm yourself with this. But at the end of the day, uh, for you to start now is, 
it, it's just really, really one of those things that it, it's how you say it, it's a lot easier than it was. The amount of new publishers that are making money off the back end, off back end, off the front end is astounding compared to what the rate it was at now. Um, so yeah, if you're, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you got through to the end. Um, you know, grab my guide below the keyword profit checklist, which is the first link in the description. And um, that will show you how to find a profitable keyword whilst not being too competitive. Um, if you're interested in your keywords and you want to learn how to find profitable keywords, I also have my course, which is the rapid uh, publishing keywords dot com get that link in the description below so if you have any questions or what your thoughts you know want to discuss about 2019 you know comment in, uh, comment, in, comment below and let me know if you like video give me a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next video All right catch you soon bye